What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal and today we're going to go over how to build infinite scroll with React hooks. Now, if you've ever gone to YouTube and searched for videos and you started scrolling down, you'll notice that YouTube starts auto populating more and more videos. And this is a technique that you're going to want to use in your own websites as well. Now there are NPM libraries that give you infinite scroll out of the box, but today we're going to be building infinite scroll with just bare bones React and React hooks. And the reason to really understand how this works is honestly because it could be an interview question. I actually know someone who got this as an interview question while interviewing for a big tech company. They were applying to be a front end engineer and they got this interview question. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is to create the project. So here I'm running npx create next app with Tailwind CSS and I'm titling the project infinite scroller. Once we've created the project, we can CD into it, CD, CD into infinite scroller and then run npm run dev. So this is going to open up the project. Let's go to localhost 3000 and here you have it. You've got the next project. So all I'm going to do is remove all the unnecessary code. So I'm going to go to the main section here and just remove all this unnecessary code. Right. And let me just say hi here and then remove the footer as well, because that's also unnecessary. So as I refresh the page, yep, you guys will see the hi right there. So the next thing we want to do is actually start loading some data so that we can create an infinite scroller, right? And I'm going to be for this project using the Pokemon API. And so that is the Poke API which you can you know, find over here. And the main query that we're going to be running is um, this one right over here, where we're going to be able to gather a ton of different Pokemon names at the same time. So let me start working with that. Let me zoom this out a little bit just so it's a little bit cleaner. And let me also turn this into a JSX file so that um, the editor is going to start giving us auto suggestions. So if I start typing div, you'll see it like that. So now let's start by getting some basic Pokemon data and displaying it on screen. And of course, to query data from any API, we're going to want to use the Axios library. So let me cd into coding tutorials, infinite scroller. And here I'm going to run npm install Axios. And that's just the library that makes it really easy to query different APIs. We can just import Axios from Axios, like so. And let's just uh, get some basic Pokemon data. So uh, when this function is loaded, we can do axios.get. And the query here is right over here, Pokemon uh, API v2. And let's just get some basic data going. So uh, let me copy that. And now, as soon as that data is there, we can actually um, console.log it because that's the best way to check that the data is actually there. Data. So right now, all we're doing is um, querying the Pokemon API with about 100, uh, you know, just 100 Pokemon just to see what it looks like. And this should appear in the console. So what is going on here? Oh. Um, dot get dot then is what I meant to write. So once we get the data, then we want to uh, display it. So let me save that. And inside of the console here, we should refresh the page. And there you go, we got a you know, about 100 results. But again, we don't need that many Pokemon. So let me just limit this to 10. Let's just say we're going to display 10 Pokemon. And, uh, you know, let's store this information, obviously. So const Pokemon and then set Pokemon equals use state. Import that from React automatically. And this is going to be an array. So once the data is there, right, let's take a look at this data. We want to we're going to want to get the results and the name of the Pokemon from the results. Right? So it's data dot results dot and, and that's an array and we want the name for each Pokemon from there. So let's change this to be, uh, a, uh, let's create a const 
uh, new Pokemon equals an empty array for now. And we want to populate this with the results um, that we are getting from the API. And the results is an array. So for each uh, Pokemon, uh, let's just call it P, we're going to be able to get the name of the Pokemon, right? So we're going to get the name of the Pokemon, and we're just going to add that to this new Pokemon array. New Pokemon dot push p dot name and that is going to give us the pokemon in an array and of course the last thing we want to do is to update is to set the pokemon uh, to be the new pokemon so what this is going to do is it's going to as soon as the component loads we're going to request the pokemon api for 10 separate pokemon and we're going to set that in our reactive variable now again this reactive variable is not being displayed here so let's just you know do a simple little for loop and display it so i'm going to say pokemon oops pokemon dot map p and also i'm going to pass in the index as well as i so p is the pokemon i is the index and let's just do oops uh, let's return this and let's set the key to be I and let's just display the Pokemon here. Um, so I'm just going to display P. So we're going to be replacing this high. Cool. So we've got our initial 10 Pokemon. All right, so now we've got Pokemon data displayed on the screen. The next thing we want to do is just add a little bit of styling so that we can actually trigger a scroll event such that we can load more data. So let me style these components really quickly. Um, I'm going to go here and call this a class name. And I'm going to give it a border and a padding. So padding is going to be maybe 20 actually no not let's not do padding let's do flex and then let's do width and height so width 40 height 40 and let's also display the uh index so index plus one so this is the um so bulbasaur which is the zero width index is the first pokemon so that's what i'm trying to display here and let me save that and see what i get Cool, so now we've got a little bit more styling and so now we also have a scroll bar here and basically once we get to the end, we want to start loading more Pokemon data. So let's see how that's accomplished. So I just finished up doing a couple more UI adjustments so it's clear to see what's going on here. Now I want to do a little bit of code cleanup and put this into a function because we're going to want to um, call this Axios function once again once the user scrolls all the way to the bottom. So how are we going to do that? We're going to create a const load more Pokemon function and this function is just going to set the Axios information. So what we want to do is call this as soon as uh, we load our component, and we can do that using use effect, right? Um, and by specifying nothing over here, what we're saying is when the component loads, we want to run this function, and the function that we want to run is called load more Pokemon. So um, now we are basically doing the same thing and if I were to refresh this browser you should see that you now nothing has changed right I'm refreshing the browser and we're seeing the same information just did a little bit of refactoring the next thing we want to do is to add a window scroll listener and what this scroll listener is going to do is it's going to tell us when the user is scrolling and the best way to do that i'm going to open up the console here just so you guys can um, see as i debug what's going on so let's create a window scroll uh, event listener so we're going to say window dot add event listener and this is going to be the scroll uh, event so when the user scroll what we want to do is handle the scroll so i'm going to create a uh, handle scroll function so here i'm going to say handle scroll equals and for this per for this purpose let's just do a console.log right console.log high 
right? All we're doing is when the user scrolls, we're going to display a high. As you can see, as I'm scrolling, um, you know, we got our event listener working. So what we want to do now is um, actually get the data, right? So when the user scrolls all the way to the bottom, we want to determine when that happens. And when that happens, we want to load more Pokemon. So uh, let's go back here. And now I'm going to display the two pieces of inf the three pieces of information that we need to handle, right? The first is the, uh, the targets, documents, elements, scroll top, and then the height of the scroll. So what are these two things? As we refresh this page and we start scrolling, right, you see that the top height right now is eight. So when I scroll down, the top of this is going to um, increase in height, right? It's going to increase all the way till we get to the end where it's going to be uh, 166. But that's not the height of the entire thing, right? That's not the height of this entire window. So what we want is to add the uh, scroll top with the actual height of whatever this window is. And when those two added together are equal to 816, we know we've reached the bottom of the page. So um, we have to get that final element and let me display it right over here. Um, window. And this is gonna be the window dot, I think it's height, inner height. So the win window dot inner height. And you'll see what I mean as soon as we get here, right? So as I start scrolling, you're gonna notice that, okay, we're at the top um, about like less than a pixel. And on the window, uh, the, this whole window is about 650 pixels or in height, I guess. As you start scrolling down all the way to the bottom, you're gonna notice that the sum of the top of you know wherever we are in the scroll plus the height of the actual window is equal to 816. So basically, we know we're at the we know we're at the bottom of the page when you know these two added together equal the scroll height. So let's do a quick little check. So if the window's inner height plus the uh, the top of the scroll is let's say plus one is greater than or equal to the entire scroll height, right? Then we can console.log at the bottom of the page, right? Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes um, the sum of these is less uh, is off by like about a pixel or so. So I'm just going to be adding one here. Um, scroll all the way up and then clear the console. So as I start scrolling down, nothing is happening. And as soon as I hit the bottom, as soon as I hit the bottom, there we go. We're at the bottom of the page. If I scroll a little bit up and then scroll more down, cool. We're at the bottom of the page. So now we know when we're at the bottom of the page and when we're there, we want to call the function to load more Pokemon. So now I'm sure you guys are sort of piecing these things together, right? We can delete this, delete this. And here we can just say load more Pokemon. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we are loading the same Pokemon, right? We are loading the same Pokemon. So we need to update this function because right now load more Pokemon is just going to load the same 10 Pokemon that we had before. So um, what we want to do is create an offset. So let's say let uh, offset equals zero, right? And we want to ensure that we load the next 10 Pokemon, right? Uh, so I'm going to say that whenever we call this function, whenever we call this function, we're going to increase the offset by 10. And here, what we can pass in is the offset itself. So this is um, a thing that you can pass into the Pokemon API. And here, I'm just going to be passing in the offset. So now, if I get to the bottom of the page, we're going to be setting um, the new Pokemon with the 10 new uh, Pokemon. But you're going to realize that there's actually an error here. And you'll see that really quickly when, once I get to the bottom. So let me refresh this page at the top. And when I get to the bottom, 
you're going to notice an error. Whoa, wait, what happened? We're only showing 10 Pokemon. We're not showing all, uh, we're not adding to the previous 10 Pokemon. So that is the final error that we want to fix, and let's fix that in the next section. Okay, so we're at the top of the page, and as soon as we scroll down, what's happening is we're replacing our old Pokemon with the new 10 Pokemon. And so what we want to do is update, um, is to store the old Pokemon as well as include the new Pokemon. And so that is a pretty simple fix, right? Inside of the Accuus query, we are currently setting the Pokemon to be the new 10 Pokemon, which is why we're only seeing 10. If we keep doing this, right? If I keep scrolling up and down, you're gonna notice that these Pokemon are getting updated, right? They are the next 10 Pokemon, but they are getting replaced with the previous 10 Pokemon. So let's go to our set Pokemon um, react uh, use state function. And here, what we can do is, so we can get the old Pokemon like so. And what we can return is the old Pokemon, because again, the old Pokemon is an array, right? It's an array. And we can also get the new Pokemon and spread them out and turn that into an array. This is a super simple fix. And as soon as I save that, right? Once I start scrolling down, hit the bottom of the page, we should see that more Pokemon get loaded. And there you got it, an infinite scroller with React.js so yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you guys now understand how to build your own infinite scroller using React and React hooks. If you enjoyed the video, then consider leaving a like because that really does help me out and subscribe to the channel for more web development content just like this. I also post on Twitter, so you can feel free to follow me over there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.